It's now the time we've all been waiting for, the presentation of the association's top three awards. First of all, the Achievement in Service Award gives recognition for service to UNLV, the UNLV student body, and or the association in support of alumni related activities and events. Receiving the 2014 Service Award is Randall J. Campanelli. <laughs> Randy has been a passionate and dedicated supporter of UNLV and alumni over the past 30 years. He served on the board of directors of the UNLV Alumni Association from 1984 to 1994. He represented the interests of UNLV on the UNLV Intercollegiate Athletic Council and on the Pew Foundation Task Force for UNLV. He co-chaired UNLV Career Day with Scott Johnson, and they dramatically increased the number of employers participating by personally calling them. He co-chaired the UNLV Legislative Liaison Committee and led a team of volunteers who convinced legislators to provide funding critical to the support of UNLV's rapid growth. Randy is a 1977 graduate of UNLV. He has more than 30 years of experience in wealth management and is a chartered financial analyst. Randy is a past president of the CFA Society of Nevada and has served on many investment committees for various nonprofits. He has served as a board member for the American Heart Association, Western States Affiliates, the Las Vegas Natural History Museum Board, the Las Vegas Rotary Club, and Nellis Air Force Base Support Team. He served as vice chair of the board for the Public Education Foundation, an independent nonprofit in Nevada that's dedicated to supporting public education and former chair of the American Heart Association and past president of the Las Vegas Rotary Club. It is my pleasure to present the Achievement in Service Award to Randy. Thank you, Mr. President. I, uh, you know, it reminds me of what Adelie Stevenson said many years ago, actually before I was born, I think, where he said these introductions like you just heard were like perfume. They smelled good, but they were tough to swallow. <laughs> So, boss, President Snyder, Provost White, distinguished faculty here. Um, I'd also like to recognize Joe Brown, who's here, who's a longtime attorney here. And like my former boss, uh, much of what's happened good, or the good things that have happened in Southern Nevada have been through their efforts and on their shoulders. I'd also like to recognize one of our honorees, uh, Carolyn Sparks, who bears the scars of things that I and most of us take for granted. Perhaps not some of the, like Professor Hudgens, who have uh, toiled in the trenches, if I may. Um, I want to thank the Alumni Association, Mr. President. I want to thank my family um, and my guests that are here. Um, I'm going to take my two minutes and talk about something that I have wanted to get off my chest, and I'm not going to give this opportunity up. I realize I suffer the substantial risk of being the illegitimate, illegitimate child at the family reunion, but I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> you know, when you get older, and I'm 59, you actually start, you don't think about your mortality, it just sort of smacks you in the face. And I'll, I'll give you an example. I grew up in Chicago, north side of Chicago. I'm a Cubs fan, and a couple of years ago, it actually occurred to me, I realized actually that I would not be alive when the Chicago Cubs won the World Series. <laughs> This is true. This is true. And you know, every time I go through the spaghetti bowl and I see the 95 South that at the spaghetti bowl narrows down to two lanes, okay, it irritates me. And then I remember, oh, by the way, you know, if you ever drive through Kingman, they have a freeway too that's two lanes, okay. And then I remember that, well, wait, that's going to be fixed. But the earliest year it's going to be fixed is in the year 2020 which is when I'm scheduled to retire, by the way. I recently ran into an old friend of mine who's currently a regent, who's done a wonderful job. We were talking about the new funding formula, and he says, you know, Randy, we made it very clear that this funding formula is going to take 20 years to get fully funded. Well, I'm here to tell you that 30 years ago, we were working, however flawed the funding formula was, we were working just to get it funded, flawed and all, which never happened. And so I looked at this region and I said, I'm going to be 79 years old <laughs> when this thing's fully funded. And then I read the Lindsay report yesterday, 
And I was actually very, very heartened through your efforts, Don, uh, Neil Smatresk, uh, President Harder, um, Provost White. I was disappointed to see the actual budget number for the South, which includes CSN and, the, and, and uh, Nevada State. But I was very heartened to see that the governor's budget was substantially augmented higher education in Southern Nevada. And I was even more heartened to see that in the legislature it was augmented even more. So I want to thank the governor and our Southern legislatures, le legislators and, and, and the rest of the state for augmenting this. But then, you know, when you get to the end of the report, however flawed it may be, if it is flawed, I'm sure some people think it's flawed. But you know, the bottom line is, and that's when it occurred to me that perhaps I was gonna die of old age and we would still have a chronically underfunded city. And I asked this question, we all want Las Vegas to be the city, the, the jewel, the great city, but will we ever get there if we're chronically underfunded. And I would submit to you for the College of Southern Nevada, if the College of Southern Nevada were a child, they could be arrested, the state could be arrested for criminal neglect. And so I have these crazy ideas. I hope I'm not getting you in trouble, boss. <laughs> like I really personally don't care about the Democratic caucus for the state and the Republican caucus for the state. I know this is wildly idealistic, but why don't we have a Southern Nevada caucus? That's what I would like to see. And the only way it's going to happen is if you folks keep asking for it. Okay, and, and this is not such a wild idea because it's been done before. When our senior Southern legislators attain these positions of leadership, which is a tremendous accomplishment that obviously I haven't accomplished. Why don't you name yourself the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee or its associate in the assembly? It's been done before. I also want to say that anything I may have been credited for doing um, in my era, if you will, on the alumni board, my 10 years, the idea was probably thought of and invented by Fred Albrecht, who then at least 70% of the execution was done by Fred Albrecht, not by folks like me. And so it's with great humility that I accept this award and I thank the Alumni Association.